guys, before I start the video, make sure you vote in the upper right corner for which car you think is going to win this race. Also, come on, check us out on Instagram. Let's do this. This is a 1974 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. And I can't lie to you guys, this is one of my favorite cars at the Pure Stock Drags, and it's because it's just a great, honest car. It's not trying to hide anything, but it's not the most powerful. 100 pounds over body weight, here we go. Ah! Ow! Ow! And that's because this car has a 400 cubic inch engine putting out... Uh, 225 net horsepower. 225. It does make some pretty decent torque, 330 pound feet at 2800 RPM. And I'd say that's pretty impressive considering the compression ratio of this car is only 8 to 1. I'll bet this Firebird would be the perfect daily driver. It's got great low-end torque, it's built to handle a ton of abuse, and it drives a lot like a modern car. I mean, I would drive the shit out of this thing. 1974 was the last year for the Turbo 400 three-speed automatic. After that, Pontiac would use the TH350. But that doesn't really matter to this car, because oh yeah, it's got the rare four-speed manual. Daddy like. In the four-speed cars with a 400 engine, 308 gears were standard. Luckily, this one has 342 gears, so that should help a little bit with performance. Would you guys like to know the standard gearing that came in the equivalent car with an automatic transmission? 256 gears. <laughs> F*** you, Pontiac. Nah, I'm just kidding. I love Pontiacs. You son of a bitch. The Trans Am was a pretty good value. It started at $4,446, and adjusting for inflation, that'd be about $23,328 today. I found this promotional ad online for the 1974 Pontiac Firebird, and wait until you guys see how they showcase the durability of the automatic transmission. I've never seen anything like this in a promotional ad ever, so let's just check it out. Transmissions are tested far beyond normal limits to make sure the ruggedness is there for you. A 250 cubic inch 6 is standard on the Firebird. Esprit, Formulas, and Trans Am have standard V8s and all engines can be power matched. With yes, he was doing alternating burnouts in drive and reverse. They made just over 10,000 Trans Ams that year, but if you break that down into the four-speed cars, that's only 1,962. So this car is kind of rare. Do you guys remember when I said that the Trans Am, when equipped with a 400 engine and the automatic transmission, came with 256 rear gears? Well, Road Test Magazine actually tested that exact car, and would you like to know how long it took for that thing to finish the quarter mile? 18 seconds! <laughs> Come on! I don't know what the miles per hour were, and I really don't care. I'm sure everybody was already aware, but by this time the Trans Am was starting to get a little heavy, and this one's no exception. With driver, it's coming in at 3,992 pounds. But enough talk about this absolutely gorgeous 1974 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. Let's check out its opponent. This is a 1970 Dodge Challenger RT, and these things are definitely one of the quintessential muscle cars. The base engine in the RT was a 383, and it made some pretty good power, but this car has a 440 Magnum. And when you're facing a 440 Magnum, you've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? And keep in mind, this car has a four-barrel carburetor. It does not have a six-pack. And so with that, it also has a slightly lower compression ratio of 9.7 to 1 compared to 10.5 to 1 for the six-pack cars. Even still, it put out a very impressive 375 horsepower at 4,600 RPM. Now keep in mind, those are gross horsepower ratings, which is when they test the engine without any attached accessories. Whereas when I talked about the Firebird, that was net horsepower, which is testing with all of the accessories. And with that said, is anybody interested in hitting the bar, maybe grabbing a couple of beers. My personal favorite is 480 pound beer! And that's a pretty good amount of torque. I would say it is sufficient. This car has the ultra cool four speed manual with a pistol grip shifter, but of course you could still get the torque flight automatic, and that one came with the slapstick shifter. And if there's one thing I love, it's slapping my stick. Yeah. Oh! 
<laughs> Standard rear gearing on this car would have been a 354, but this one has optional 410 gears. You'd think that the Challenger might have a weight advantage in this matchup, but it doesn't. With Driver, if you can believe it, this thing is coming in at 4,000 pounds even. Hot Rod Magazine tested a 440 Magnum with an automatic transmission and 355 gears in November of 1969, and it ran the quarter mile in 1454 at 98 miles per hour. Keep in mind, this car has better gearing, and if they have any of the modifications allowed by the Pure Stock class, it's gonna run a little bit quicker. And trust me, you guys, it's definitely gonna run quicker. But enough talk about these two cars. Let's see what they can do on the drag strip. Challenger takes this one running an impressive 13.38 at 104.60 miles per hour and the Trans Am ran a 15.48 at 91.51 miles per hour so I'm gonna give that a not too shabby. How about we check that out one more time. Thanks for checking out this drag race, you guys, and I'll see you at the next one.